fundamentally the appeal of a film like Iron Master is that kind of barbarian archetype, the sort of action man hero and, and this sort of this 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 great figure of, of kind of human strife and and perseverance through the the kind of warfare and, and violence of history. It it grounds the general pathos of human history into a ninety minute kind of the caveman action warrior romp of sorts and the aesthetic the cinematographic philosophy is so it's blunt it's there's a certain grace to the casts framing within a particular simulated landscape of the past and yet there's also a certain brute force with which it's it's depicted it's not totally garage it's kind of reflecting of the the kind of gr- grunt and grit of the proceedings in front of us. It's a time when Lindsay's more restrained and somewhat lazy style of directing is totally appropriate for a project such as this. I think anything more extravagant and cinematic would have felt distracting or um, anachronistic to the project. Iron Master is basically entertaining, and I think a lot of it has to do with something possibly primal. There is... One can imagine enjoying a film of this sort, whether it's the more uh, kind of art house vein tradition of the more, I guess, subdued and reflective um, Quest of Fire picture, which I actually uploaded a review of prior on this channel. Whereas Iron Master, of course, it's more of the kind of barbarian bash. It's a kind of triumphant ode to the to the realities of, of, of human existence and evolution which is the discovery of steel the conquest of those who wielded the first swords and then the eventual uh, overthrow of, the, of the, those invaders by those who were clever enough to invent bows and arrows and were able to pick them off from a distance for long way ranged weapons and so if one expects iron master with such a pitch to be an interesting prospective film experience why would anyone ever think that Umberto Lenzi in 1982-3 is the director of choice for the production? One wouldn't have expected it. Even me, necessarily, who enjoy watching his films, kind of a novelty sake, and I just like what they represent about the trends of filmmaking around them, how the Italian industry is trying to mimic the what was popular and resonant to audiences and, and to the other filmmakers around the globe about what, what about those Hollywood productions was so fascinating, how they're trying to garage engineer them in, in their own domain. That's fascinating to me. And the kind of creative and corners, the creative cutting of corners that the Italians employed at that time is, is extremely interesting, I think, as 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 a as acts of filmmaking. Um, if if their um world building or their effective simulations or how absorbing they were, I think they are interesting as as a series of decisions. Now, where Iron Master becomes ideal with this with its particular lensy budget and handling is like i said that very archaic and kind of ill thought out and impulsive approach to film direction without being considered an architectural it's it's so forced and basic and tried it plays it safe it makes the focus of the action the center of the frame without being too creative or experimental or trying to have the audience analyze what's going on beyond it as a as a function or necessity or inevitability of the circumstances of the cast and the of the characters and as a result given what the cast of characters are what it means for the potential stability of this particular uh, batch of our ancestry. Iron Master is fulfilling ultimately as this heroic journey of a man who overcomes the villainous tyrant and shows that there is a way forward that doesn't have to be dominated by the, the ruthless, cruel bullies and despots of the world. It's, it's one of these satisfying and really satiating and yet maybe somewhat... Uh, not exactly 
a bastion of critical thinking, although perhaps it's hardest in the white pl bright place, possibly one of these sorts of, as I said, basic or uh, somewhat unambitious action films. It may as well be a, a Conan the Barbarian, Robert Howard uh, knockoff in respect, although, as I said, I think it borrows a lot from Quest for Fire as well. And, but it's just the, the simple, the kind of bare and stripped back premise of the you know prehistoric man developing weapons and this being um almost a kind of very basic accidental and cute allegory for the arms races of the 20th century beyond iron master is really fundamentally entertaining insofar as it functions as typical uh, sometimes the domain of b movies but you know very very functional and and lizard brain action bash entertainment hero's journey campbell in um you know safe and tried true escapism but there is something of great submerged philosophic subconscious interest there as well which is steering the elevation of iron master from slop into really entertaining and kind of basely whether you realize it or not informative and enriching true and serious dedicated meaningful considered impressive let's be f let's be real pulp i think given the premise of iron master the way it was told was the best possible way it ought to have been told that would be my argument here it is the true history of humanity, not denied, although wrapped up in a nutshell and placed out as this Joseph Campbell-esque Italian B-movie with a beginning, middle and end, a hero overcoming the villains and reducing the struggle of you know, good and evil, of, of efficacy versus brutality and tyranny, reducing it to the most banal, simplistic and yet yet admirably entertaining action bash Conan the Barbarian meets Quest for Fire in Beto Lindsay pulpy, silly gloriously goofy and yet a, a serious act of <laughs> genuinely impressive garage, you know, building something from nothing filmmaking if I've, if I've ever witnessed it after a day outside, one might just want to relax indoors with a viewing of Iron Master because not only does it function as the kind of fast food entertainment one hopes, there's also that, there's also that submerged, there's also a wallowing, a wading through the earliest stories humanity has ever told. It's almost as though an artist uh, chose to recreate one of those cave paintings from, as you might have seen in the Werner Herzog 2010 documentary Cave of Forgotten Dreams. It's as though someone managed to recreate those with a um, red and blue pen in a notebook. But it seems impressive and beautiful as those pieces from the cave. Well, not really, but it's impressive and satiating in a really base way. Not as kind of majestic as those cave paintings were, but it's almost something you'd sooner pull out to enjoy rather than to desanctify the cave paintings. You wouldn't put the cave paintings in your home, but you would enjoy the kind of scribbled notebook equivalent of them just as a kish novelty yeah that's iron master there's a, that, that's getting at the appeal of the film i feel gloriously jungian shamelessly pulpy riveting triumphant entertainment it makes one feel like such a primate but a self-aware primate who isn't in too much denial at least one of my five favorite films from better lindsay i would probably guess